from the Department of Communication in Phillipsburg. This is a special edition of Inside Government with Cedric Peterson. To our audience here at home and around the world, you are now Inside Government. In our edition of the program this time around, we have the team of Public Service Center representing section head of the Phillipsburg branch. Let me start with Fabiana Vanderpool Arnell and representing section head of the Cincinnati branch, Miss Priscilla Davis. Ladies, it's great to have you once again in the program. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us again. Ladies, it's 10th anniversary celebrated in 2023. Congratulations to you and the rest of Team PSC. Um, how was the celebration observed this year? This year we had a week long of events and it was actually organized by Mrs. Davis. Uh, Mrs. Davis is actually the longest the longest team member of Public Service Center. She's also, as you said earlier, section head of the Simpson Bay location. So I will let Mrs. Davis chime in on what all was organized by her, assisted by the team. Was that a heavy responsibility for you this year, Brasilia, or was it something that you were comfortable with? I was comfortable with it. The 15th of April marked our 10-year anniversary exactly. And um, the 21st, we try to give back a little bit to our customers by telling them thank you. Thank you for 10 years. Um, their cooperation, it was really something nice. So what we did, we had um, some snacks giving out. We gave, what we also did is we did a listing of all the, the uh, employees that worked over the 10 years. And we also gave them a thank you, whether they came or they went and they're no longer with us. We thank them for also giving their service to our customers. And the customers themselves, we gave a little token and we had little raffles. So that was something that we did. We celebrated on the 21st. We had steel band at the location to liven up the, the venue a bit. So that is what we actually did awesome. to celebrate. And what was the feedback like from... The customers, how did they receive it? Well, they received it well. They had some that stayed by and enjoyed the music. And, you know, they were happy that government gave back something. That was, <laughs> um, that was a plus. How did Phillipsburg play a role in, in the celebration? Well, we assisted um, Mrs. Davis and the Simpson Bay team, actually, in making sure that everything was uh, taken care of. In addition, that same week, the... Social Services and Labor Affairs Department also had Customer Appreciation Week. So they also had entertainment at the Phillipsburg location. So it basically worked well where both departments actually celebrated customers and, and the appreciation for their customership, right. if I may right. use that word. <laughs> you um, just created one. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was really nice. And um, Mrs. Davis really did a lot of work. I mean, it was, you know how it works. You have to get everything together and you have a short time span to make sure that everything falls in place. So it was, it was well received by both Simpson Bay as well as Phillipsburg. Established. Received well. Okay. Established, Fabiano, um, especially for our viewing and listening audience, the overall mission and vision of PSC. Um, it has been 10 years of service and we are a part of a small island developing state um, so government services are constantly evolving and trying to grow to meet that demand. Um, how would you describe your overall mission and vision? Has things remained the same or things have evolved? How would you see it? In my opinion, and for the department, if I may speak on behalf of everyone in the department, our services have evolved tremendously. We are now really going more into the digital aspect of everything where we are trying to make it a lot easier for customers. The vision of Public Service Center is to have a one-stop shop. So no longer where you have to go to five different departments in one day to get different documents. So that is still our overall vision and mission. And we are getting there slowly but surely because we have to coordinate all of those elements with various de service departments that fall under various ministries that already have their own policies outlined qua the type of service that is required by the customer. So that is taking a little longer than we expected, but we are not giving up because once you have a mission and a vision, you continue until you get there. Of course, indeed. 
The Simpson Bay branch, um, Priscilla, take us there. I mean, I'm on this side of the hill, mm-hmm. but for, for, uh, for those that are on that side, services that can be expected from the Simpson Bay branch, remind anyone who's probably never been to the service center what they can expect. Okay, presently we have um, the civil registry department and we have the receivers department. The, in comparing with Phillipsburg, there's a limited, of, limit, the limited services at CRD, short for civil registry. Um, customers can obtain with an appointment. You have to have an appointment. They can obtain their driver's license, their ID cards, uh, registration forms. Like I said, there's limited services, and they can um, purchase a uh, apostille and um, I'm forgetting declarations. Declarations, declaration, driver's license declarations, and certificates, birth certificates, death certificates. They can obtain them once they have been registered. They can purchase them. They order them, and then they pick them up at the civil the civil registry department. And then we have the receivers department where there's cashier, cashier for all payments. All payments go through government. They have to go be paid to a cashier. So we have the cashier's department and then we have a receivers that is also falls, the, sorry, receivers collection falls under the, um, yes, one Ministry, Ministry of, of Finance. Finance. And there with a the collection officer, if there's any payments that needs to be discussed or there's a tax issue, you can talk privately in an office with a collection officer. That is available presently. And also not forgetting our customer information desk. That is also, they also receive all customers. If there's questions that needs to be answered, they are available to answer our customers at any time to um, facilitate the services. Fabiana, one of the key things that I enjoy, and I mentioned this to Priscilla off camera before we started the interview, is the presence of young people at the front desk. You know, when you enter the government administration building, you see some young faces. Um, do you guys view that as being a great entry, or at least the way I see it, as being a great entry position for anyone who comes into government services as a young person starting a career? How do you guys view that? Well, we're getting older. <laughs> And you have to give the younger generation a chance. Some, some students do not get the opportunity to leave the island to follow their studies. And as such, they have to resort to seeking a job. So we are very happy to have two, if, if I may say, two of the youngest reception desk clerks for the public service center. Um, and both are doing very well. I must say they are very jolly persons. They greet you with a, a, a laugh, a smile. So that's a plus. And we also ensure that every customer is felt appreciated once they come in. The most important thing is to make sure that when the customer steps in, whether they come to a meeting, whether it's a, a meeting they're attending, or whether they're just coming to ask a question or coming for a service, that they're greeted with, with, with respect and, and appreciation. And we will go the extra mile once we are able to. Because some customers think that you can make magic, not all the time. We can help, but sometimes it's not within our purview, not within our workspace either. And it will then need deliberation through another ministry or another department. So with having the two young, the two young, a young lady and a young man, this is the first time as well that we've had a male um, person in our team and it's working very well, I must say. He's doing well among all the other ladies. <laughs> it's working out. And they really do a great job, I must say, because their work is not easy either. I'm talking to section heads of Public Service Center, Ms. Fabiana Vanderpool Arnell, section head, Phillipsburg Branch, and Ms. Priscilla Davis, section head, Cincinnati Bay Branch for Public Service Center. Stay with us. Coming up in our next segment, we're going to talk more about the technology that actually works when it comes to rendering the service to you, the people of St. Martin, as our conversation with Public Service Center continues right after these public service announcements. Stay tuned. St. Martin, listen up. The Civil Registry Department has taken seven services online. That's right. 
You can now request a family tree, local address change, migration deregistration, a registration form, request for existing certificates, transfer your driver's license, and a driver's license declaration, all online. Go to services.sidmartingov.org forward slash civil registry and easily complete a request form for the service that you need. You can also pay for the services online using a major credit card or debit card and receive certain final products digitally as well. No traffic jams, no waiting in line. And if you're on island or off, you now have full digital access to seven civil registry services at services.sidmartingov.org forward slash civil registry. That's services.sidmartingov.org forward slash civil registry. For more information, call 542-0652. Now go online and request your service form today. Welcome back, everyone. If you just tuned in, I'm having a very insightful conversation with ladies representing Public Service Center, Ms. Priscilla Davis. She's section head Simpson Bay and Ms. Section and Section Heads the Phillipsburg branch, Ms. Fabiana Vantapool Arnell. Ladies, um, continuing our conversation, Fabiana, you talked about the technology that um, would be oh, that is currently being used, some services being online. Um, let's talk more about that. How is tech being used to render great customer service to the people of St. Martin. What we started a few years ago was to allow customers to book appointments online so they no longer have to come and wait in those long lines as we had years gone by. So that is a surplus uh, plus for us as well as for the departments because they no longer have to stress. And, you know, it, it also brings a balance in work. They can now balance their team as for how many um, how many persons they can assist per product, per service, and they can also balance their their team's um, work ability and how they how how many customers they can be able to handle. Sometimes they go more over than what is requested of them per day. Some customers are unable to make it to their appointment. That is a little technical issue though that we really have to work on because persons for some reason they do not cancel the appointments and then that slot stays open when some other customer could have obtained that slot and that is something we ask customers to do very often if you're not a, if you're not able to make it to an appointment you can call there are different numbers you can call the government administration building and we can connect you to the respective department and then have your appointment canceled or rescheduled um, so the technical part is moving on very well we're getting more departments on board as well where the booking system is concerned, where they now understand to sh how to better structure. They're already structured, but to better structure their time as per assisting customers. So if you have one customer wanting four ID card appointments, for example, a family of four, you can now book four appointment slots at the same time. And then it's not like you are there with four people for 15 minutes when when each appointment slot is 15 minutes, it's, it's an hour. So it's a, it structures everything better, in our opinion. The departments, again, as I said before, um, more, more departments are coming on board. They're seeing the, the Benefits importance and benefit mm -hmm. of having the online system and going tech, so moving on to the tech world. The only issue we have is a lot of... Um, customers are not tech savvy, the older generation. So we also try and assist them at the desk. We, those persons who have phones, we tell them, you know, sometimes they come in, yeah, I don't have internet on my phone. So we allow them to use the guest internet um, part at the government buildings. And then we show them and instruct them how to book their appointments online. And we tell them they don't have to come all the way to town or to Simpson Bay to book an appointment. They can stay wherever they are, pull out their phone, go to Google, go and search appointments.sinmartin.gov.org online, and then they can pull up whatever appointment they wish to make. For now, we do not have every government service department on the booking system. So, for example, we don't have immigration services on the system, so you will still have to go through their, their booking system. And they are also now Online, for example, we used to do the police, the certificate of conduct applications, which are which are well known as police records. We no longer carry that service, for example, 
we have built it. Public Service Center has built that online service um, portal. And now the immigration department, where it actually lies under, took it back over as of January 9th. So you don't even have to go anywhere to apply for a certificate of conduct. You can just sit wherever you are, go online and apply. You pay online or you come in and you pay at the receivers and then you you load your 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 receipt and it comes back to your computer. So you no longer have to come in, go somewhere else and pay. So again, that is the one-stop shop service that we're we are looking at and that is why that is where public service center built that system from scratch and then eventually now turned it back over to immigration department. You talked about the inclusion of other government departments and them getting on board over the last 10 years. Has that been going the way the team expected it to go or is there room for improvement there for other departments to get on board? How is that going? In all honesty, it's not going how we expected it to go. Okay. It's a lot of um, asking and letting them understand the system and again, you need to have patience because it's something new. And when Qmatic, for example, was introduced, which is the, the technical part of Public Service Center, there you're going to get glitches because you're building a system. And it's just a matter of trial and error. We have to go back. Okay, this has to be fixed. This has to be enhanced. And that's how we can set it that it can work for everyone. The same thing with, again, going back to the certificate of conduct application. When it was built, we it, was, it took a while to build it because we had to do internal, um, how would you say? We had to ask the internal team, can you check this? Are we missing anything? Is there something else that we can add or do we have to remove? Then we, we took a small group of persons who apply on a regular basis, companies and individuals who submit on behalf of others, so we, we ask them also to, to apply. And then based on that is how we could have enhanced it and fixed it to the area where it is today, where it's now almost flawless. Any type of advancement in the technology, and either, either of you can actually chime in on this, um, to enhance. So we have online. Any types of apps in the future? Can you project something for the future when it comes to how we will be interacting with Public Service Center um, in the future when it comes to future technology? Anything on the horizon? That is what we're busy doing with the DGTP as well. They are also busy on their end, and we are bas basically being merged to work together with them in the very near future. We already started with a survey that started um, two or three weeks ago. And based on the survey now, we can then build and then we can join together with the DGTP. And then from there, we have an app already where the booking, the booking app is available. So you can come into the building and scan it. It's also on our Facebook page, I think on the government um, Facebook page as well, where you can just scan the QR code and it takes you straight to the booking um, system. And that is what we are looking at with the various departments. We also have civil registry who also have online services where you can request certain certifications and documents online. And then you just, you pay for it and then you just come in and collect the actual document. But we are trying to ensure that you don't even have to come and collect the document, that it goes right back to your email. However, with certain documents, you have to be very careful because you have to know for sure that that's the person that you're sending it back to because of the privacy policy. So there are some laws and policies that you, we have to really stick to. And maybe for all services that won't, or products, it won't be possible. But for the most, that's what we're looking at. Okay. We can get back in our second and our third and final segment of Inside Government. My conversation with Team PSC continues. We're going to talk about some comparisons and services between St. Martin and perhaps the Netherlands and what are we studying as a way of being able to enhance ourselves. Stay tuned. Our conversation with PSC continues after these public service announcements. Every day at the Civil Registry Department, we are confronted with at least one customer who did not pay attention to the expiration date of their passport, such as the Lockhart's. To avoid this from happening to you and your family, we urge you to check the validity of your passport. 
If your passport is about to expire, please follow these simple steps to make an appointment. Visit appointments.cmartingov.org and follow the easy steps. All applicants must apply in person, last issued Dutch passport, two recent photos taken within six months, minors must be present with legal guardians, fee for adults, 210 gillers, fee for minors, 150 gillers. Additional information can be requested. Four weeks processing time. Your identity is your responsibility. If you're just joining us, you're inside government. And my conversation is taking place with the representatives of the Public Service Center representing Cincinnati Bay Branch, Ms. Priscilla. Uh, Davis and representing the Phillipsburg branch, Mrs. Fabiana Fantapool Arnell. Ladies, so much things to cover because it's again 10 years of service and such a short period of time, but you're doing well so far. And there's a lot of things that you guys are offering to the public of St. Martin uh, when it comes to possibilities of getting good service um, from government. Technology is at the heart of this in order to be very efficient. Um, the question that I started off with um, from the past segment was, do you look at yourselves with your Netherlands counterparts when it comes to government service and say, you know what, that's where we need to be? How do you compare those two um, and how do you see yourselves in the next 10 years from now? Anybody wants to tackle that? Okay, I will, I will chime in a bit on it. Um, comparing with our partners in the Netherlands, we, we are a little, well, we are a few steps behind. Where we should be, where we would like to see ourselves in the next 10 years, if we go back to the, the concept or the idea behind PSC, is to have the one-stop shop in such a, a way that um, customers could come in and uh, also the employees could be flexible enough to, so there's, you have more of a front office approach. You look at it more as a, a, a front office where all front office services are merged. Customers could come in, they need a particular service, and at any point, any employee or civil servant that is front office oriented could assist the customer. So presently we have our departments we are, um, how you say, we are not, we are in little islands here mm -hmm. right now. In the Netherlands, it's more of you go walk in, you pull a ticket, and anyone that is there is dispatched to assist. And that is what we will, then you'll be more efficient. Mm -hmm. your, 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 your services are efficient, your, your staff is efficiently used. That is where we would like to see the department or the idea behind the one-stop service for the department? Because one of the key things I was, you know, you get this to your, your young people when they leave. So my daughter, for example, who's currently in the Netherlands, dad, everything is on a phone. And I'm like, wow, yeah, well, that's where we want to see ourselves at some point. Yes. And of course, you know, like again, small island developing state, we don't look at it as being, oh, we're once again behind. It's just an area of opportunity for us to, to increase, grow. to get exactly. to get better. Yes. So um, the cumatic system, that's how it all started. Yes. Tell, tell us how that has evolved over the last 10 years, So because there is some growth there. Yes, a lot of growth. Explain. Um, when it first started, it started as a customer. It had the potential, but when we first started, we weren't using it to its full capacity. So we started using it as a customer flow system where everything would be organized just to give the, 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 the viewers or the listeners an idea. The customer will come in, they, will, they have the opportunity to go to a kiosk machine, they press it, it's a touch screen. They choose what service is very, very um, simple. You press what service you would need, it gives you a ticket, and it also directs you to the room where you need to be. And on the other end for the employee, the civil servant, on their system, it's interfaced. So they will see they have a waiting customer and they will be able to pull. They also can organize themselves. For instance, civil registry would see what service they have to be prepared for. And then they will also be ready for the customer to receive them and give, provide the service efficiently. That was the idea. Uh, that's where we started. As my colleague explained, uh, as time go by, we had the appointment systems and then we... So everything 
appointment booking had to be on booked online. All appointments was booked online. So that is was also um what would you say? An enhancement. Yes, an enhancement. It also Qmatic also received it and you could have uh, merged it into Qmatic. So Qmatic would also be able to so as the customer comes in, they have an appointment. The staff would be able to look into the system through Qmatic and see also there's a waiting of the person is on time, they are late or whatever. So everything is merged into the system. So it keeps evolving and there's a lot of, 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 of features. The Qmatic is the way the customer, it's a customer flow system that the, the service flows efficient. That is the idea behind of it. And like we said, we are still growing and still feeling it out and feeling all of the, the features it can offer and we continue to grow with it. And coming, chiming on that and adding to it, the Qmatic system, for example, if, I'm, if I am the, the clerk assisting a customer, I can see if you are early, if you were late. Um, as Mrs. Davis said, how long you've been waiting. We can also, as um, managers and supervisors, also monitor staff with how, how efficient they're also working, which is also important because we do plannings for the year and then at the end of the year, each staff member has a one-on-one -on -one talk as per their work performance for the year. We have it at the beginning, in the middle, and at the end of the year. So all of these things come back into your, your discussion at the end of the year. Um, in addition, sorry? A measuring tool. A measuring tool, correct. Mm -hmm. And then in addition to that, what persons also would need to understand is um, there's also a time limit. When you have an appointment, you are allowed to be only five minutes later than the appointment time that you booked. If you come there six minutes after, you're not supposed to be assisted. There are times, you know, you again, we have to be customer friendly. We are all about customer service, but the customer also have to remember it's not only you receiving a service. You have other persons who are also there waiting for a service or about to come in to be given a service, maybe the same service that you're um, waiting on. Mm -hmm. So those little things, we still have to really educate our nation on, on how to book online, how to be on time, be patient. Sometimes the systems goes down. I mean, the internet system, it, it happens anywhere. It can be good, good today and tomorrow it's all over the place. And then it might show them back a little, a little while or maybe we'll have to cancel everybody for that day and rebook them for another day. So there's still things that we have to work on, but in our opinion as PSC, we have come a long way where technology is concerned and the services also to be rendered are concerned. Modern tech, we've covered that online. We expect to see some growth, and I'm sure you guys will definitely get there. Um, giving you the opportunity now as we're closing out the program, final words to the general public and things that you'd like to say. Fabian, you kind of started in that tone there with regard to reminding them patience is needed, um, being on time. Anything else that you would like to mention to the public? Actually, let me start off with Brasilia, give you the opportunity. Any final words to encourage customers on that side of the hill to, uh, to be, be mindful of? Um, first of all, we would like them to be mindful of, uh, my colleague explained, yes, patience, uh, but also that our uh, we have everything set, we have appointments, and we would like them to also be mindful that for Samsung Bay, it's a small branch. It's a branch from the main branch, the main um, uh, government building. So we don't provide all the services at the this, this Samsung Bay branch. But in any event, all services are by appointment, with exception of our receiver's office. So we need them to also abide by that particular, um, what do you say, condition gotcha. for the departments. Fabiano? At the Simpson Bill, uh, the sorry, Phillipsburg location, we have a lot more services. And the idea is eventually for us to come in with a representative of that specific department to come in and elaborate on the services that customers can receive. And um, for example, every ministry besides justice ministry we handle. Not even because the the refunds that were given back from immigration, for example, also were at the public service center. So we kind of fall under every 
ministry, we assist them where where they see it fit that we can help them with a service that makes it easier on their end as well. And in addition, again, it's for us to understand we are all customer service oriented. Um, we do understand everyone has a good day and a bad day. We try and be only good days, but we are also human. So please have patience. We have to have patience with you. You have to have patience with us as customers. We are there to assist. Again, there, we cannot always make magic. We try our best to. And for customers to understand, we also have our limitations to assist them as well. And be patient. Use the, the booking system. It's very, very, very easy. And it's, it's less stressful. I mean, sometimes, not sometimes, almost everyday customers would either send an email or let our staff know, or even send private messages and say, you know what, I went in to get a service and it took me less than the time span that I was supposed to be there for. So we're really trying to make it an in and out process as less stressful as possible, but both customer and um, staff member have to work hand in hand to achieve this. This is Fabiana Vanderpool Arnhell, Section Head, Public Service Center, Phillipsburg Branch, and Miss Priscilla Davis, Section Head, Simpson Bay Branch for Public Service Center. Ladies, thank you so much for being a part of this edition of the program. Thanks for having having us. And to our radio listeners and television viewers, thank you for tuning in and being a part of this conversation that I've had with the Public Service Center team. If you've missed it, be sure to get video on demand at the official Facebook page of the Government of St. Martin at facebook.com forward slash SXMGOV. For other video on demand, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel of the Government of St. Martin. That's youtube.com, Government of St. Martin. And for audio playback, be sure to log on to St. Martin Gulf Radio 107.9 FM and listen to us throughout the course of the day for the replay of this conversation with Public Service Center. On behalf of my colleagues at Public Service Center and all of us here at the Department of Communication, I'm Cedric Peterson. Thanks so much for tuning in.